I was about 10, and I remember we went up to London to buy a chess set made of wood. We got it from Selfridges. It cost 10 shillings and sixpence. See, I remember all this. And uh, then we came back on the train, and then, you know, we were going to bed, but we persuaded our uncle to teach us the moves. And I remember him teaching us how the knight moved. So, uh, yeah, these, these things you do remember. The pressure um, does take its toll on you, and there's emo emotional pressure in a game of chess. And I, uh, I wouldn't say I responded well to the emotional pressure. I actually do have a lot of fighting spirit, but then I do take defeats quite hard. And about the early 70s, it, it clearly became apparent, though I, I had reached quite a high standard. I was British champion, or almost. I was getting overtaken by some of the younger guys, and therefore I more or less dropped out of the top level of competitive chess. The other reason would be the financial one. So I wasn't employable, so really I, I gradually had to develop my own form of employment. I actually had to create my own job, my own world. If you're looking for the, you know, the development of mankind, then you actually have to work with mankind, and uh, that means the children, and you can't say, you know, they're useless, that's the material you've got to work with, and you, you want to find out what's the best way they can learn. The only problem is the kids won't stand it, see. So I found, because they don't want to learn anything, they don't want to be bored by you teaching them. So I found that they, uh, it was hard to keep them in my classes. So I, when I started giving, getting these prizes that the kids could win, suddenly the tournament, you know, my chess lessons became much more popular. Take them. Yeah? Um, take them. No, it's not. It's a threat. Take them. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think the children, because you're, you're coming at the problems from different angles, then the, the, the children therefore um, will be find that more stimulating than uh, if, if you just teach them something which is, you know, well known. It helps me a little bit with my, why, how I think, um, because you have to think quite a lot in chess, um, especially when you're trying to think, if I move that piece, can it be taken? But they have to learn to accept that they can be defeated and that they can do something wrong. And the children that can't accept that, of course, there's a lack of growing up in, in, the, in, in their life. And so I think chess will, will teach you that, the, the ability to recognize opposition and overcome it. You can say it's a specific type of learning that you're getting from chess, but I think it's more like real life than the normal schoolwork, uh, because you're in a situation, in a sort of battlefield, where your ideas have to work. So you do find yourself under constant pressure. We need smart kids to work out the problems of this world. and. If the kids are bored or lazy or, or uneducated, what chance have we got? And though they say, well, chess isn't a good sort of preparation for life, I, I, I think it is because life is so messy that we often just give up and hope someone else will solve our problems for us. So I think if you can solve your chess problems, then you can move further into, into problems which are less clear.